Awesome. Welcome back. We are going to talk in this section about what is cloud computing. But first, before we talk about cloud computing, let's talk about what traditional IT services are like. So imagine that you've got this brand new idea and it's, you know, 2023 and you want to produce something with new technology. So you request three servers because you need one for your web server, one for app and one for database. And because you're going with a traditional triple tier architecture. Now, this sparks an order by asking for these three servers from your IT department for hardware itself, meaning like the servers. Then you have power for the servers. Then you have to have cooling for the servers. Then you have to have rack and space for the servers. And then if you're working at a company, your operational and security teams are going to have to install some software. And then whoever installed and set up the whole thing is going to have to give you access. And then you're going to go in and then set up your software for your new tech or your new idea. That's what traditional IT is like. This, by the way, could take anywhere from days to weeks to months, depending on if there's an approval process or if the vendor even has the servers available. So in this model, you have to take care of all levels of infrastructure. So this means networking and internet access. This means the storage. This means all of your security, your access control and physical security. It means the server hardware and the computers themselves, as well as the applications that have to be installed, set up and configured on them. And of course, any databases that you might have to set up, install and configure any governance compliance. This could include patches, locking down the system or exposing it in a certain way and any migrations, upgrades, or patches, and of course, anything to do with cooling and power, which is the environmental aspect. So the great thing about doing it this way is that, well, there's a lot of positives, but the cons are is that you get increased costs and poor ROI, which means poor return on investment, meaning that system's only, if you pay $1,000 on it, you might get $500 worth of value. You're also limited because in this, our particular case, we only have three servers. So if we need six, we have to wait another three days, if not three weeks, if not three months to get them. So you can't just add more servers on the fly. You are responsible for everything here. You have a limited number of locations that you can run your software. You're going to need more personnel than you would need if you were, for example, say in cloud. And you're going to have longer provisioning times. That's the three days, three weeks, three months that I was talking about. Now contrast that with the fact that you do get improved security because you control all aspects of the infrastructure. You do have a lot greater customization and you've got a lot more control because you control every facet of this environment. So you have access to it, you can control it, but you're also responsible for it. So that begs the question then, well, how is cloud computing different from say traditional IT? Well, here's where it changes. The definition of cloud computing is the on-demand delivery of IT resources, particularly things like compute power, application hosting, database applications, networking and more. And you know, the main thing here is that there is so many services that have to be run inside of a data center. And what if some of those could be offloaded to a cloud computing platform? So here, for example, cloud computing works off of an API driven model. And what that just simply means is that much like you going to a coffee shop and making a request for coffee, a client comes in and makes a request. And like here, the request is either coming from a website or a CLI or an API call, and it's actually requesting a database, as you can see. And what's happening is they're responding and saying, you know what, we're going to stand up a database for you. And here, cloud stands up a database and does it based on whatever specifications the client requested. And it, it really is actually that simple once you have your account set up. But there's no contracts. There's no one that you have to talk to. You can literally set up an account on AWS with a credit card and a phone number in minutes. And you could literally be deploying services at scale in 15, 20 minutes or less. Now here, we're showing our client on the left-hand side and we're talking to the Amazon's server infrastructure in a sense, and we've generated a database. Now, the cool thing about cloud computing is that if you were to buy five physical boxes, you would be responsible for those physical boxes, those physical servers, and you couldn't really give them back. But in the cloud space, what happens is that if you ask for a one terabyte MySQL database with four CPUs and 32 gigs of RAM, guess what? You're only paying for four CPUs and 32 gigs of RAM. And when you're done with that system, if you want to give that database back to AWS, delete all your data, give it back, then you will only pay for as long as that database was running. Once you give it back, everything shut off. 
You can also access your requested resources in seconds or minutes. Oftentimes, it's so fast, it just kind of boggles the mind. For example, standing up a basic database in AWS with no real heavy pre-boot configuration usually will take less than five minutes, typically less than two minutes before you get access to the database. So cloud computing takes the items in orangish red here, internet access, physical security, cooling and power off of your plate. And if you go even deeper into the cloud, it actually takes some of the other things like migrations, upgrades and patches. Some of the governance and compliance can come off of your plate as well. So in addition, we had to have to talk about how people use cloud computing, because if cloud computing is this on-demand delivery of compute resources like servers and networking and databases and pieces like that, and all you need is a credit card and a phone number, how do people use this? How do people use these models? How do people consume AWS? In general, in the industry, there's three big perspectives on this. The first is, are you just all in cloud? meaning you don't run anything else anywhere else. You just run it all in either AWS or some other cloud provider, and you are all in. You are not using your own data centers. You're not mixing and matching. You're just in cloud, and that's where you want to be. Now, the second model, sometimes referred to as private cloud, but also known as on-premise or on-premises, and this is where you're running your own virtualization technologies in your own data centers. You're not in cloud and you don't have anything in cloud. Everything just happens around servers in these data centers. And then the third model is a blend of, well, we have some of our workloads, some of our applications are all in cloud, and some of our applications are on our traditional data center boxes. And so that plus sign there is to denote the, the merging of the cloud at the top and the you know, on-premise data center at the bottom. So some are in cloud, some are not. Now, remember, cloud only is typically the way most startups start now. Pretty much anyone who started a business after 2011, and that is a generalization, so don't take that as a fact. And any startups of all sizes are pretty much all in cloud. They run everything in the cloud. They will migrate existing projects to the cloud if they exist, but they're all in. And so all new projects just happen in the cloud. And in this case, it would be AWS. And what's great about this model also is that there's a shared responsibility with AWS for security and some operational concerns. It's a great model if your security and compliance can sustain, which most can. And then there's the on-premise model, which has minimal to no cloud computing usage. All projects run in a data center or rented data center that is either owned or actively leased you know, by the business or project owner, you're responsible for all security and all operations. Now, you could use a third party, like Rackspace, for example, and they will offload some of that for you, but it won't be as comprehensive as it would be if it was AWS, as an example. So, and you can actually see this a lot with legacy companies that just haven't had a reason to move to cloud for that particular workload. Can be companies also that need strict control and security over their entire infrastructure. So if you're a company, say, for example, working for the government, you can't really just use public cloud because the government's going to want you to keep things relatively locked down and in your control, not exposed to unknown parties. And then if, if there's an all-in cloud model and there's an all-out of cloud model, there's also a hybrid model, right? Which is where you run some of it in the cloud, some of it out of cloud, migrate some applications to the cloud, you might leave them alone. But most new applications are designed and built for the cloud. In this model, there's usually a very fast connection between the on-premise traditional data center resources and the cloud resources, in this case, AWS, right? So in summary, the main thing to remember is that cloud computing is the on-demand delivery of IT resources such as compute, networking, application hosting, doesn't matter, but it's on-demand, meaning you need it, you're willing to pay for it, you don't necessarily have to get into a contract, you just pay for it, if it costs a dollar an hour, you pay that dollar an hour, there's your virtual machine, there's your compute power, enjoy, right? Number two is that there are three models of deployment. There's all in cloud, all off cloud, which by the way is also sometimes called on-premises or on-premise or private cloud. And then there's hybrid where you're both in the cloud and you're on-premises and you're splitting workloads between the two, meaning you've got one workload that makes sense in cloud, another workload that made sense in your traditional data center. A hybrid model, by the way, is sometimes a uh, misnomer it has multi-cloud and that's not the case. Hybrid cloud and multi-cloud are not the same word definitions. So in cloud, in your traditional data center, mix of both. 
And then remember, this is API-driven storage that works on a client-server model. So that means that you as the client call Amazon's infrastructure, AWS's infrastructure, and you say, look, I want 50 virtual machines of this size. And it sends a response back and says, I'm working on it. And it can even, in some cases, let you know when it's done making those 50 servers and you can go log into them. This is, by the way, pay-as-you-go, instant access, almost instant access to compute resources, networking, app hosting, databases, um, machine learning models, doing training data. It's very powerful and very broad in scope. So that was our What is Cloud Computing summary. Michael Forrester, thanks for listening. We'll catch you in the next video.